Right, let's get this straight and uh, started and we begin with our top story this morning and like I mentioned it has everything to do with the IEBC which has terminated the three billion shillings tender for the installation of an integrated elections management system for the August 8th polls. In a letter to the French firm Gamalto SA on Tuesday IEBC CEO Ezra Chiloba noted that the firm's bid was significantly above the budgetary provision. He also cited litigation as another reason for the cancellation, saying it had lost valuable time. Last Thursday, IEBC said it was in the process of concluding the tender with the French firm. On February 28th, IEBC cancelled the tender so as to invite fresh bids, but was stopped in its tracks after Avante International Technology went to review, uh, of course, the challenging the cancellation. The system is meant to integrate the existing biometric voter registration the biometric voter identification, the electronic results transmission, and the politi political party and candidate registration systems. Amended election laws prescribe that IEBC should have this particular technology in place by the end of March. And uh, that, of course, is in question. Will it really happen? Probably not. And that's why we want to have this conversation right now. Joining me in our city centre studio is Opio Wandai. He is the Ugunja Member of Parliament. Thank you so much for joining us here on the News Centre. Now, with just 138 days to the election and then this critical component of the election, uh, this particular system, the bid has been terminated. What is your reaction to this? Uh, Betty, uh, it is true that uh, we are definitely racing against time. And uh, it's also important to note that this integrated electronic voter management system is one of the provisions uh, that was uh, put in the amended election laws, which was a negotiated uh, process. It's also important to realize that uh, this is a, a, a highly lucrative tender, so to speak, because we're talking about a tender of three billion shillings or, or the thereabouts. And such tenders, uh, no doubt, uh, attract a lot of interest. There are people who have specialized in uh, broking tenders in this country. And this was no exception. So firstly, I must applaud the IBC commissioners because I am privy to the information that they have stood their ground and they have done the right thing. Because this tendering process was uh, mired in a lot of controversies and uh, cancelling it altogether was actually the only option available to the commission. So what they have done is laudable. I just want to ask them that since they have now cancelled the process, let them invite the stakeholders, the key stakeholders. And the key stakeholders in this matter are obviously the political parties. So that this matter is addressed in an all-inclusive manner with a view to finding a, a way forward, uh, which must be implemented very, very quickly because we are running out of time. I foresee a situation where we might end up uh, doing direct uh, 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 procurement or, or so that we uh, arrive at a, a supplier or a service provider uh, who is agreed upon by majority of the stakeholders and who has got the capacity to perform. Betty. Let's talk about the reasons that they're giving uh, for the termination of this uh, particular tender. And they say one of it is that, that this uh, tender is significantly above budgetary provision. Is it now that they're realizing this? This has been going on, like you mentioned, for such a long time. Well, well you will recall that uh, at the initial stages of this procurement process, uh, a number of the bidders were knocked out at the technical evaluation stage. And uh, incidentally, it's only this particular company, this French company, that uh, remained. And it's the only company which therefore was uh, taken through the financial evaluation stage. It is at that point in time that, uh, of course, it was established that what they were quoting was way above the budget. And uh, public money must be used prudently. I am also, of course, concerned that this uh, came, uh, this realization of, of their quote, which is uh, way above the budget, uh, came um, a bit late in the day, I must admit. But the, the fact of the matter is that uh, uh, the right thing has been done eventually because public funds must be 
uh, used uh, uh, prudently. And we also have to take cognizance of the fact that we have got a, a time frame to work within in, in order to deliver a credible election. Question comes in because we're talking about valuable time, and that's what Ezra Chiloba is saying that they've lost valuable time. But here we are in a situation that, you know, according to the law, this thing must be in place by at least May, the first around the first week of May. Yet, you know, he's saying that, you know, he's lost valuable time. Isn't this ironical then? There has been push and push. You know, there are so many vested interests in the matter of procurement within the IBC. These vested interests, some of them operate from outside the IBC. Uh, but uh, I stated earlier on that this latest development has happened as a result of the firm stand taken by the IBC commissioners. I am not talking about the IBC secretariat because clearly they slept on the job. Remember, these IBC commissioners came on board uh, uh, just a little while ago. Okay? Yeah, so the IBC secretariat cannot uh, be absolved of the blame of having slept on the job and made uh, this uh, whole process be bungled in the manner it has been bungled, yeah. I want to bring in, stay with me, I want to bring in Jack Tumor, who is a former ECK commissioner. Thank you so much, Jack, uh, for joining us on News Center. First, I'd like to hear your reaction to this. As I asked uh, Mr. Opio, we have just 138 days uh, to the elections, and then this happens uh, just uh, days to uh, when it's supposed to be implemented according uh, to the law. What is your take on this? Well, my like they say, express that the time calls for extraordinary measures. I've said that we're really running late in terms of our time. Frame. The excuses that the IEC has given include the, that the money was a bit too high. But more important, I think, is the litigation. And I've said it in many times that at this stage, Going for litigation for any case involving IEC is going to cost us a lot of time, which we don't have. My feeling is IEC, the procurement board, and the political parties get together as early as possible and work out a formula of how to work out the process of getting these three items without going through the normal procurement procedures. A case has been plotted or hiring this equipment from India and such other countries. Perhaps those are some of the possibilities we can look at because we are so time squeezed that we cannot afford to waste any more time. Otherwise, we are just preparing for a failure. Will we have enough time? I mean, it's very important that you're talking about time. Uh, but what is going to be happening next? Like you said, that all stakeholders have to come and sit down. Uh, will we really realistically have this system in place uh, at the right time that is supposed to be in uh, according to the law? My thing is that's why I'm bringing the other option of perhaps hiring and getting experts to come in now, not tomorrow. Because don't forget, that apart from getting this equipment, apart from getting this thing, we shall need time to train our people so that they can familiarize themselves on the way to use them effectively. Failing which, I think we would rather go manual than use these uh, kits and uh, systems that we may not be familiar with and that may mess up the whole election. All right, let me go back to Opio Wandai, who's a Wunja member of parliament, joining us from our city centre studio. I'd like to hear your thoughts on what's next. Uh, right now we are in this uh, situation. The tender has been terminated. Uh, what do you think should be the next cause of action? Betty, actually, I'd said, I'd said it much earlier, that uh, where we are currently, there's only probably one way out, and that is for the IBC to bring together all the key stakeholders, and I, I'm happy that uh, uh, Jack Tumwa is agreeing with me, bring together the key stakeholders uh, who include the political parties, uh, of course the procurement authorities, and the IBC itself, to work out a way forward. And the way forward here would basically entail two things. One is a direct procurement. Yeah, uh, of a service provider uh, whose integrity, whose capacity uh, uh, has been ascertained. And secondly, is what Jack Toma is also proposing, 
that we could go the way of borrowing this technology, this equipment from other jurisdictions. And we have in mind South Africa, even Ghana used it the other day, very, very successfully. We have India and very many other places. And I'm also aware that some of these countries have been willing, very willing to offer uh, this, uh, this, this uh, uh, product to us. Yeah, so uh, this is the time now to look at it more critically, so that we don't put into jeopardy the plans or the arrangements uh, 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 around the uh, forthcoming elections. Because as you know, Betty, elections are a matter of life and death, not only in this country, but in very many other uh, countries in the world. And of uh, how IBC has been conducting, uh, you know, these uh, processes that need to be done before uh, August 8th so far? Uh, you know, we have raised our... I was saying, uh, Betty, that we have raised our reservations uh, with the manner the IBC has conducted itself uh, now for more than a year. And uh, it is now that we are being vindicated. You know, an electoral process is such a critical process that you cannot afford to manage it exclusively. You must at all times involve stakeholders and seek their views. This is what we have been demanding. And had it been done, I'm sure it would have uh, fared slightly better, yeah, uh, Betty. All right. But all is not lost, mm -hmm. in my view, yeah. Jack, I'd like to hear your assessment. We've been having these conversations with you here on the show for quite some time now. What is your assessment of how uh, the IBC is carrying out the processes uh, right now uh, before the eighth date? All right, we seem to have lost uh, uh, Jack Tumor. Let me come back to you, uh, Mr. Opio and I. Let's talk about uh, the opposition really had moved before uh, to court to really challenge uh, KMPG's uh, involvement in the voter register. Don't you think that th things like this uh, really halt or slow the process uh, that uh, IBC should be taking care of right now? Exactly. And this really uh, strengthens our point that had IBC been listening to us, there would have even been no reason for us to go to court to challenge the appointment of KPMG as the auditors of this voter register. We had said from the very word go that we need a credible organization with a history, with a record of auditing a voter register. We had said quite clearly that KPMG was not anywhere near that kind of organization we had in mind. So oh, we would want to sympathize with Kenyans because on the one hand, we want the IBC to be able to meet its time timelines. But on the other hand, we must ensure that everything is done correctly so that we don't come back to blame each other uh, 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 much later in time. So oh, we are not to blame. We are basically... Uh, uh, doing what is in the best interest of Kenyans. And even on the matter of the voter, uh, of voter audit, voter register audit, we can still come to the table and agree on how best to go about it. As the yeah. political class, are you concerned about IBC? They, they're always falling back on their timelines. Are you concerned as a, a member of the political class? We are definitely concerned. And that's why we are making this question a tea, the IGC, to please involve us in all these things they are doing. It doesn't mean when they involve us, we shall dictate how things should work. But at least they will benefit from our input as key stakeholders. Otherwise, we risk getting into an election which is going to be bungled. And the cost of a bungled election it's too great to, to contemplate here. Yeah. And finally, you've been talking about this involvement for some time now. What sort of involvement are you uh, talking about? There is a uh, very clear framework uh, within the political parties liaison committee uh, through which the IBC must continually engage with the political parties. Rather than that, the IBC is also free to engage political parties at individual level, okay, if, uh, when and uh, if it is necessary. 
That is the spirit we are talking about. It's actually the spirit of inclusivity, which we have seen lacking. But I am happy that the new IBC commissioners have started to see the sense and they are actually starting to do things in the manner we had expected the IBC to, uh, to do things uh, from uh, day one. All right, thank you very much. Uh, he is Opio 